While I've talked a great deal about both Sonic and Knuckles in my coverage of uh, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, I have to admit I've overlooked someone fairly important to this entire adventure. Someone you could argue actually represents that 3 in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. This furry little deformity, Miles the Prower. I've talked so much about this two cartridge freak of a game without really talking about this two tailed freak of a character. And look, I know I've railed on him worse than UK Sonic, and seriously, we're gonna need to sit down and talk about that book because, uh, oh my goodness, boys and girls. Oh my goodness. I, I mean, yes, I, if you've seen my Sonic 2 video, you probably assume the most I want to play with Tails is on the business end of a good old fashioned fox hunt. But the truth is, I've always had a soft spot for him. I just, I've never really given him much consideration. He's never been my favorite. But I'm not the only one in the Sonic fan base, and a whole bunch of people seem to love him, so, well, I figured it was time to give him his fair shake. Since I've been focused squarely on Sonic 3 and Knuckles in terms of story and character, I've really only been branching out to what I can get from the games themselves. As inconsistent as Sonic's canon is these days, the classic games did a fairly consistent job keeping their story straight in the little ways they could. And also, the Archie comics were just really stupid and really not canon. But in this one instance, we need to talk about Tails' characterization outside of the classic trilogy just a little bit to fully appreciate his journey on the island. Because going into this, and honestly for many years, I didn't think there's a whole lot on the surface. Unlike Sonic and Knuckles, who gave you a pretty good idea of what these dudes were all about even if you just went by their sprites, Tails... Well, I, I mean, he seems cheerful, I guess. He was just the straight man to play off Sonic's radical, in-your-face, Cool Ranch Dorito-flavored attitude. He was just a kid that's tagging along. In Sonic 2, the game where they debuted this orange abomination, he just gets in the way of collecting emeralds. And even when you play as him, you can't even activate his ass copter. And if you get all the Chaos Emeralds, well, they don't do anything for him. Little Guy doesn't even get those dramatic little pictures at the end of the game. Canonically, Tails had to hang back and watch Sonic take out the Death Egg for the first time. Doesn't even get to see through the end of the adventure in the game he premiered in. But that's all well and fine. The sequel's now here and it's time to rectify those mistakes. Because, hey, look at that! He can fly! You can fly, you can fly, you can fly, you can fly, you can fly! It's weird to think about, but yeah, Tails didn't have playable flight in Sonic 2, but in Sonic 3, he does. And thankfully, they took advantage of that with the level design. When I see people talking about how much more they love Sonic 2 compared to Sonic 3, while it is fun to debate which one is superior, I can hardly blame anybody for making 2 their top choice, because it's the most distilled classic Sonic experience. It's speedy, straight to the point, exploration is there, but not really much of a requirement. They learned all their lessons from Sonic 1 and made a game that helped bring out what made the mechanics so unique and fun about the Hedgehog himself. And even though Tails was there too, none of those levels were designed for him. But when you get to Sonic 3, well, alright, hands up, all you other ancient nerds out there. How many of you who say that this is your favorite game actually preferred playing Knuckles or Tails over Sonic? I was a Knuckles man myself, and I know plenty of people love Tails because, well, these levels are far more elaborate this time around. Sonic in this game compared to the other two characters was just kind of bland. At least that's how I felt at first when I got my hands on this game for the first time as a kid. I've definitely grown to appreciate his playstyle, don't get me wrong, and I'm not saying he's not super fun or that Insta Shield isn't incredibly satisfying, but exploring these maps with easy to use abilities, one of which players had been dying to use since they were first teased with it in Sonic 2 was just awesome. He can get to spots Sonic and even sometimes Knuckles can't reach. Like even here in Lava Reef, a Sonic and Knuckles level, there's a giant ring that only Tails can get to. That's amazing. Now again, this is not as zippy as 2, and if you prefer that, who can blame you? Making levels designed for all three characters means that you will run to spots you just can't access or just don't make a whole lot of sense for old Blue Boy here, but make a whole lot more sense for a flying fox. And I think that's what helped make Angel Island so special for a lot of us players. We slowed down and spent more time in these zones. And unlike Knuckles, who had doesn't chuckle. I mean, he, I mean, he is, though. I mean, he, right, that's the first thing he does. Who took you down more challenging paths. Playing as Tails meant playing Sonic's route, but unlike Sonic, his flying ability gives you more time to stop and smell the flowers, and also find more giant rings. Now, it's common knowledge to us Sonic fans that Tails and his ability to fly makes him the easy mode of this game. But after my most recent playthrough, I'm not so sure. Because while Sonic and Knuckles can go super when you get all seven Chaos Emeralds, Tails, uh, he, he gets he gets nothing. Yeah, these guys weren't kidding about their weird little bits of continuity. Tails didn't get a super form in Sonic 2, so he's not getting one here. But with the introduction to Super Emeralds, Sonic Team allowed the pup to finally attain his own transformation. 
to su super tails. Uh, well, that, that's kind of a ripoff. He doesn't even go hyper? We waited all this time and he just kind of glows like knuckles? I guess Sonic's the only one allowed to see a hairstyle. Oh my god. So not only do you get super tails, but also an entourage of Tweety Birds who give Zelda's cuckoos a run for their money. I taught I taught a pussy. The Flickies get their own super form and get to take their revenge on Robotnik themselves. When you're playing as super tails, you're basically playing the game adaptation of the birds. So yeah, Tails becomes invincible and moves with a bit more kick in his d tails, like the other super forms, but can still drown and doesn't have any screen clearing insta death attack. Also, he's just called Super Tails, so no, we don't actually get a hyper form for this little guy. Not that it matters when you have the Mega Magpies wrecking everything in sight, protecting you from all the things that can't hurt you anyway. So that's Tail Super Form. And like Hyper or Super, Knuckles or Sonic, this completely breaks the game. That I, we're just gonna digress for a second because I've seen people say this all over the place, to which I have to say, duh. Of course it breaks the game. Kids weren't unlocking this craziness their first time through the game. This isn't supposed to be the standard play style. It's supposed to break the game. It's the ultimate reward. If you're good enough at the game where you're rolling through and grabbing everything in the first couple zones, great! You've played the game enough to get to that point. You've already endured the trials. Now it's time to go wild. Well, I mean, unless you're playing Tails. I'm a little embarrassed to admit the challenge I used to feel as a kid kind of snuck up on me a couple times during my latest playthrough with Tails. Normally, I roll through this game with Sonic or Knuckles, but just skip out on Tails. Tails, because, well, he's the easy mode, right? I mean, yeah, he can fly and reach places that Sonic and Knuckles can't touch, but these maps aren't speedways all the time. There are a lot more hazards you can Ascopter right into, and that marble garden boss fight is just a tad more challenging because you can't spinball yourself into Robotnik's ride. You can only hit him with your propelling appendages. And yeah, look, I'll admit it took me a minute to slow down and teach myself how to handle this fight because, well, it is harder with Tails. And as a seasoned player of this game, I was used to grabbing all the emeralds early on and just tearing through Sonic 3's remaining levels with Super Sonic. But I can't do that with Tails. He can't go super in the first half of the adventure, regardless of how early you grab the jewels. You have to wait and strike at just the right time in boss fights. You have to avoid spike pits. You have to survive all the hazards. You have to play this game the old-fashioned way. Because Tails can't harness the power of the Chaos Emeralds like the cherry and blue raspberry flavored boys can. Creamsicle here just has to tough it out. He's just a kid and he's gotta try harder than the others. Literally twice as hard just to get the first super form that Sonic and Knuckles just leave behind halfway through the adventure. And when that hit me, suddenly I was looking a little bit closer at the sprites for Tails. And before I just saw a nothing character, I found a whole lot of character. First off, yes, he is much more precious than I have ever given him credit for. But he's also the only character who gets exhausted in standard play. The poor guy still gets tuckered out when he's supered up. And yes, gameplay-wise, they clearly had to put a cap on what this fox can do. But still, look at the poor kid. He's pushing himself to the limit. The only other time we see that is Knuckles after he's had his ass kicked and electrocuted. Oh, and oh, holy crap, that actually works. Thanks, Cybershell. Also, seriously, how adorable is that little doggy paddle he does when he's swimming? And I love the way he runs, which isn't actually running at all, but instead airboating his way across all of creation. He can't run as fast as Sonic, but still uses his ingenuity to figure out how to keep up. And I, I mean, look, that, that kind of makes sense. I should probably be way more impressed with the fact that he flies with his ass. But in classic Sonic days, you just let your appendages twirl about and don't worry too much about how that works. My point being that Tails can't do what Sonic and Knuckles can, but he still managed to figure out how to keep up and in turn develop skills unique to his abilities, even when he has to push himself twice as hard as his blue buddy. He can't activate a super form like Sonic and Knuckles, but he can with the Super Emeralds. And when he does, well, he can do things Super Sonic and Super Knuckles clearly can't. I know the Flickies are here to make the transformation unique, and I appreciate the developers going out of their way to do that. But if we could just dig a little bit deeper than necessary, if you think about it, we are seeing a new ability for a super form. Tails can transform other animals, and I would assume command them as well. These were once useless little Flickies, and now they're the most terrifying thing on the planet. Super Tails can essentially transfer his power to other entities, something Sonic wouldn't be doing till well, Sonic Heroes years later. And if I'm honest, the way he does it is nowhere near as impressive. Tails worked twice as hard to attain this power. When he finally got there, he made it his own.
Now, yes, we do have to address the fact that Mania made it possible for Tails to go super with regular old Chaos Emeralds, which is fine. And also, I understand why people are upset that the Flickies don't reappear, but they had to do something to make the Super Emerald transformation different. Does that mean that Tails with the Flickies is the proper hyper transformation? Archie Comics seems to think so. I, I personally don't think that really counts. This is still Super Tails to me. Maybe this newer version of Super Tails is just a little more experienced with his power and doesn't need to recruit little birds to his cause. But if that's the case, what does real hyper tails look oh my god look if he's a multi-tailed fox let's just just go with it make him evolve into a nine tails i don't give a crap i said i interpreted the theme of growth in sonic's transformations in the last video but if we're honest that is the story of tails it's always been the story of tails especially in the early days like i said i tend to keep out extra media because we're supposed to stay focused on sonic 3 and what that game provides not the retcon business from more recent games and certainly not the insanity of the cartoons and comics but i think it's important to point out that little was really done with tails in the early days outside of well making him a kid sidekick or just making him a kid. But more and more, the narrative would turn to the narrative that usually goes along with younger characters and stories, the theme of growth and potential. And we can say a lot of this stuff is headcanon when we're talking about hypersonic, but you can't really argue with the intentional narrative arc that is built into this game, but specifically for Knuckles. But we are starting to see where the games, and in turn the rest of Sonic Media, were taking tales in terms of personality and character growth. From the start, we can see he's a skilled pilot. It might joke about why he's flying a plane when he can actually fly, but I'm sure knowing this stuff helps. Can't be easy. Have you ever flown a helicopter? With your ass? I didn't think so. From here, we would see his craftiness in the Game Gear adventures, which would eventually evolve into the technical genius he's known to be. His entire arc in Sonic Adventure was about him stepping out of Sonic's shadow and becoming his own hero. Sonic already knows what he's all about. He is oozing with charm and confidence, and it's been like that since day one. Tails was a kid who was always trying to keep up with Sonic, and eventually found his own way, and through the years, redefined who he is. And it turns out, he's a genius. Not just a kid trying to keep up with Sonic, but an essential part of his team, eventually growing to rival Sonic's main nemesis. And you could argue that Tails has helped change a narrative we've seen time and again in Sonic media. The tired trope of technology bad and nature good. Science is evil and twisted and wrong. Now, Tails shows us that's not the case at all. Technology's actually pretty dope, and he's also probably smarter than Robotnik, so uh, he's got that going for him. And I think I finally realized why everyone was so upset with how he reacted to Sonic's death and Sonic Forces. This isn't the character we've grown to know and love. This isn't the hero that saved Station Square. This isn't the kid that matched mechs with Robotnik. Eggman, sorry, whatever. This isn't the kid that ran straight into danger on Angel Island and came out a hero. Like I've said, Tails' story has always been one of potential, and I've been pretty dismissive of him myself, but being deliriously tired and having my two-tailed took us handed to me a few times in the game reminded me what this character is all about, and finally made me realize why people relate to him and love him so much. Tails is what every good sidekick should be. His personality not only plays off well compared to Sonic's, but shows the crazy potential that this character has. Tails may not be my favorite character, but I understand if he's your favorite character. I understand how he could inspire you, because we see what Sonic sees in him. He's not just a fanboy, he's a hero in his own right. One that eventually could surpass the hero he idolizes. And for me, that all started here, on Angel Island. All right, guys, that is it for another video, and um, suppose I should address this because, um, well, last week I had 1,700 people following this little channel, and now it's um, it's 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 uh, you know, just 10,000 more <clears throat> people <laughs> than last week. So, um, thank you for for being here. I uh, I understand most of you are here for the Sonic content. I'm watching the numbers. Those older episodes aren't boosting up in popularity. It's just the Sonic stuff, and if that's your bag. Who am I to blame you? I love the crap out of Sonic. And I'm sorry if not all the content on this channel will always be Sonic related, because, well, I, I like other games and there's a lot to talk about. But if you do stick around, you're gonna see more videos like this, because there's an endless supply of Sonic stuff I love to talk about. I'm just gonna be mixing it in with, with other things. That's the way I've always done it, and hope you understand and hope you stick around. And maybe it's about time I mention it, but um, I, I do have a Patreon. I don't mention it ever because I, as of this point, 
don't have a consistent schedule for when I release videos. I just push them out as often as I can. Because, uh, well, I mean, before last week, YouTube was um, just a, well, I mean, it was a determined dream, don't get me wrong, but it, it certainly was not bringing home any kind of money for me. So, real life me has a pretty demanding full-time job, and I often lose a lot of sleep while making these episodes. So I guess what I'm saying is, if you like what I'm doing, you, you know how YouTube works. The more eyes on this means the more time I get to work on this. I don't need to explain any of that to you. And if you believe in what I'm doing, if you want to see more, well, that's how we start. And if you end up going to Patreon, or you still need a little bit more before you apply to that, let me know what you want to see. I've, I've never used that platform before. Let me know what kind of tiers and rewards you would like to see, and we'll make it happen. People have been asking me about live streaming and Discord, and plans are in the works. Just again, it's a matter of schedule and all well, being a little more knowledgeable about this stuff. So, all that's happening. With all that said, um, let me give a huge, huge, huge shout out to Joseph. He's been here for, God, I don't know, since like episode one, man? Like, I don't even know. Like, whenever I put out early, early videos, Joseph's been there. He's been pushing me and, and it, like recommending I just even get a Patreon up. As soon as I did, dude's been thrown in for me. So, seriously, thank you, man. And Lev, dog, I know you only threw in because, I mean, you, you support your artist friends. I have no idea if you even watch these things, but you, you still are pitching in. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I promise you the, the endings of these videos are never going to be this long ever again. Just had a lot to say because it's been an insane, insane week for me. Well, um, that's it for now. I'll be back as soon as humanly possible with another video. And, um, stick around because I still have a little more to go with Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And as I promised last week when I was about to get 2,000 subscribers, Knuckles Chaotix. After that, I'll probably do a not Sonic related video, but I keep thinking more Sonic ideas, actually. Actually, I, that might be a lie. I don't know, man. Like, there's a lot of cool ideas I can do with this franchise. So stick around. You're going to want to see what happens next. Toot toot, Tails Warriors. Here they come!